Okay, so we have talked about fluid kinematics and how it requires an Eulerian point of view. It doesn't require it. It helps to have an Eulerian point of view when describing mathematically fluid flow. Um, and we have also talked about um, some definitions about how we uh, describe, visually describe fluid flow. So now let's talk about ways that we can mathematically characterize fluid flow. Now that we have this new tool of Eulerian um, description of the velocity of a fluid. Um, so um, the first thing I want to talk about is the dilatational rate. Is a fluid spreading, spreading, um, spreading out, right? Uh, and it's we're not talking about liquids here necessarily, right? Although liquids can, to a small degree, change their um, their density, but gases often change their density as they're flowing. And um, we want to know what does the velocity field for an expanding fluid look like at a point, right? Um, so let's say we've done a computational fluid dynamics simulation and we know the velocity everywhere of a, of a gas. Given that velocity field, can we tell if the density is changing at a point or not? Um, so if we have, uh, uh, let's say, a point in space and all the fluid is moving away from it, we know that the fluid there is becoming less dense, it's expanding, it's dilating. Um, and if the fluid is contracting or compressing, then we know that if we're giving a, given a point in space, all of the fluid around its velocity is going to be heading towards that point. Um, so mathematically, at a point, um, here in this case, Mathematically, uh, for this case over here, we see that the velocity is increasing at a point, right? Overall, overall. Um, so we are going, and here the velocity is decreasing, right? The velocity is coming in, but if, if it's all coming inward, it has to be slowing down a little bit. And so we're, our velocity is decreasing overall. So if we want to talk about the, the the dilatational rate. First, we have to define it, and so our definition is going to be. Um, it's and this is kind of weird, but we want uh, the change in volume per volume per time. And mathematically, if we use uh, differential notation, so we've taken this, uh, so a change in volume per differential volume per differential time, what we end up getting is we get a dv dt times a 1 over a small differential volume. And mathematically, remember this is called the, this is called the volumetric dilatational rate. Um, this is equal to du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz. Um, which, if we want to rewrite this, is, is equal to uh, the gradient of the velocity. So, um, Again, if, if all of these units are positive, then we know that our fluid is moving away from a point, right? Um, it's going, it's increasing as we move in the x direction, it's increasing as we move in the y direction, and it's increasing as we move in the z direction, and as we move in the negative z direction, its negative velocity is increasing, so those both cancel out, so it's still positive. And so in every direction, it's increasing if all of these are positive, which means our fluid is expanding, which means we have a positive dilatational rate. However, if they're all negative, we have a negative, 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 what we know is that as we move at this point, the uh, 
the u velocity is decreasing as we move in x. So it's going less like this. It's going less in the x direction here, less here, less here, less here. So it's the velocities are decreasing, which means we're compressing our fluid, which means we have a negative dilatational rate. All right, so let's practice this. We have um, our Eulerianly, our Eulerianly, our velocity described using our Eulerian point of view. So here's our W, and here's our V. So clearly we have a 2D flow here. Um, uh, sorry, not W, U. Jeez, U is a function of x and y. V is a function of 2xy. Um, and now our question is: is the fluid expanding um, or compressing at the point r is equal to 3, 4. So we know that 1 over dv dv dt uh, sorry dv d uh, yeah dv dt is equal to and now from the Eulerian point of view it's du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz and this remember is equal to the grade mm, gradient of our velocity velocity not volume it's the gradient of our velocity um, but we can start plugging stuff in we know that this is equal to zero because we have no z component so this is going to be equal to d dx of x squared minus y squared. We've just plugged this u in here. And then plus negative 2xy d dy of that. And that v we're plugging in here. And so this is going to be equal to 2x, because we just have the 2x from here, plus negative 2x. And so it turns out that no matter what x is, no matter what we plug in here, but if we plug in 3, we get 6 minus 6, so that's equal to 0. But no matter where we plug it in, um, no matter what we plug into x, we get 0. And so our fluid is neither compressing or expanding, so it is an incompressible fluid. So its density is equal to a constant. Um, and this gives us a hint. If our density is equal to a constant, then we know which is a good approximation for water, for example. A lot of liquids, density is mostly equal to constant. Um, we know that du dx plus dv dy plus d w d z has to equal zero which is something we call the continuity equation um, for density is equal to a constant um, if we know density is not equal to a constant we have an expression for continuity that relates changes in density to velocities we can write that the change in the density with time is, remember these are all all uh, evaluated at points in space so we're looking at a single point in space and we're saying all right does the density there change in time that's going to be added to the partial of the density times the u velocity with respect to x plus the partial of the density times the v velocity with with respect to y plus the partial of the density times the w velocity with respect to z. So now, by the way, you'll notice that um, our density is also equal to a function of, um, it's a scalar function, right? Density does not have a um, direction, so we don't have an x, y, and z component, but it is now a function of x, y, 
z in time. Just like w, v, and u are all functions of x, y, z in time. And that, that has to be equal to zero for all fluids. And what this is telling us is that if our density is changing with position, so if we have a positive change in density with position and a positive u, that means our fluid is flowing in that direction, then we must have a, um, also have a corresponding change in density with time to compensate for that, right? Um, continuity equation is really an expression of conservation of mass. If there's mass somewhere, if mass is leaving somewhere, it has to um, go somewhere, right? Or if it's coming in, it has to leave from somewhere. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, this, this expression captures that. We can simplify this, though, into ways that um, are easier for us to mathematically tackle. So if we have steady flow, this becomes d rho u uh, with respect to x um, plus d rho v with respect to y plus the partial of rho w with respect to z. That again has to be equal to zero. Um, and if density is equal to a constant, it comes out of these equations and cancels itself out and we get the partial of u with respect to the partial of x. Um, plus the partial of v with respect to y plus the partial of w with respect to z is equal to zero. And again, if it's in 2D, we can cancel out the z component and we only get this. All right, we're going to stop here and then we'll talk about calculating the amount of rotation in a flow, um, which becomes really useful to characterize turbulence and lift or drag. Uh, yeah. But um, that's all for right now in terms of uh, the dilatational rate of a fluid and um, how that relates to continuity or conservation of mass.